welcome to the future. Artificial intelligence art, or in short, AI art, is the next big thing. This course is an investment into your future. Jump in early and set yourself up for success. I can't explain how big this is. You type in something, anything, and Mid Journey creates it. Any style, any color, literally anything that you can think of. From creative work to realistic photos to simply silly designs. This is all done in Mid Journey and I'm gonna teach you how you can get started with it. Sure, you can make some money with Mid Journey right now, today, and I'm gonna show you a few examples, but um, that's not what I suggest. Instead, think of Mid Journey and AI art like learning to code 20 years ago. Nowadays, software engineers have six-figure salaries, they work for the biggest companies in the world, they have incredible benefits, and it's all because they got in early. They gained experience at the right time. Well, it's the same thing with AI art. Learn it today for your tomorrow. Invest time into it and you're gonna get incredible benefits down the road. Join me as I explain everything for regular people who don't have any previous experience whatsoever. I'm gonna explain everything step by step. You're gonna have cheat sheets that you can use, resources of all sorts, so you can get awesome results. Listen, I've been teaching Photoshop for over 10 years. Trust me, this is the next big thing and you need this course. This is one of the best ways to get ahead. This is the first step into becoming an expert in cutting edge technology. Start today and your future self will thank you for jumping in early. So let's get started with Mid Journey. Welcome back. Mid Journey is incredible. It's fantastic. You type something and it magically creates something awesome. You look at their showcase and your jaw drops. Even if you're not a designer. Even more so if you are a designer. And you jump in and you want to learn it. You want to learn Mid Journey. But chances are you're going to find it frustrating. See, you look at the gallery and what other people are doing. And then you compare it to your results. And obviously you're going to be disappointed. The beginning is oh so frustrating. The interface itself, it's challenging. The prompts are difficult to learn. You have limited time and resources and Mid Journey is eating them up. This is why you need the right approach before we get into all those details. So think of Mid Journey as an investment into your future. Don't assume that Mid Journey is a finished product that's gonna deliver every single time. No, actually things are quite crazy at the moment. Things are changing week after week. This is a time where you get used to it and you practice. This is like learning to code 20 years ago. You see all these coders, all these software engineers making six figures, fully remote with crazy benefits, and that's because they got in early. They went through all of these difficult steps, all the ups and downs, all the frustration, the learning phase. This is what's going on right now with Mid Journey and that's how you should approach it. See, I jumped into it and I wanted an image of some ginger and a slice of lemon for the label of mine, for some lemonade, right? This is an actual product of mine. Okay, now that should be easy enough, right? Well, I spent hours on it, hours and hours. It fried my brain. I got so frustrated because it kept giving me silly results or the blurry ones, and I did my best. I followed up guides, I watched tutorials and whatnot, but it still messed up, and I ended up wasting hours. It would have been much faster to use any classic resource, like Adobe Stock, Unsplash, FreePack, or Envato Elements. All the links are attached, by the way. So if you're looking for the awesome results that you can immediately use, maybe this is not the right approach using Midjourney. Now, sure, there are other cases where Mid Journey does give you exactly what you want, but uh, from my experience, those are exceptions. If you're looking for something very specific, you may not get it, and it's frustrating. So, in conclusion, let's use Mid Journey so we can get used to this technology, not to deliver something when we have a deadline. Now, no matter what updates come along, how the interface changes, how the technology improves, it's essential that we understand that this is the future and we want to be a part of it. So if you manage your expectations and realize that this is going to be challenging and frustrating, 
when you're looking for something very, very specific and you're on the clock, then if you realize it's going to be challenging and you're ready for the entire experience, we're going to be much better set. The mindset is actually one of the most important things. So don't expect the world. Let's take it step by step with just learning how to walk. We're not going to sprint. First of all, we're going to learn the basics. Let's continue. Welcome back. Mid journey works based on Discord, at least for the moment. So this means that you first have to get up and running with Discord. If you already know how to use the program, please skip ahead. Okay, Discord is a chat program similar to Slack, Skype, or maybe even Yahoo Messenger. Discord works in your browser in a tab, but you can also install it as a standalone program. And that's what I actually recommend you use. It's a slightly better experience. Signing up for Discord is totally free. So I'll quickly go through the steps. It's putting in your details, your email, verifying your email. Nothing more complicated than signing up for Gmail or any mainstream service. Now, while I work in the background, you do have a step-by-step -step guide attached to the lecture, just in case you need more help with it. And we can go through the motions. So your email address, your username, which isn't really all that important, to be honest, and so on. Okay, now what you need to know about Discord is that it works in basically two ways. You can private message someone, exactly like on Facebook Messenger or Skype, so a one-to-one -one direct message, a one-to-one -one conversation. And in that case, you're going to need to know someone's username if you want to talk to someone. But most of the time, you're going to use Discord in server mode, which basically means you're going to enter a room, aka a server, where there are lots of people and anyone can chat. Again, very similar to Slack, for example. By the way, Discord may show you some pop-ups asking you to buy stuff, upgrades and whatnot, but uh, there's no need for that. No need to pay for anything. Okay, we're in Discord and it's totally empty. It's asking us to add a friend, but we actually want to go to the mid-journey server. Okay, remember, server just means room, chat room. We can click here. And if you hover over it, you can see it says explore public servers or rooms, chat rooms. And once we're here, we can use the search bar and simply type in mid journey. If you click on it, you'll be brought to it. And this is why most people get intimidated. It's overwhelming, to be honest. But no worries. It's actually quite simple. Up top, you should see this message that says join mid journey. Click it and you'll have to prove that you're human most of the time. And once you do that, you're going to get a success message. You're now a member of this server, Midjourney. Okay, now remember, you do have to verify your email address and stuff like that. But uh, let's say that you can't manage to use the search feature from the left side of Discord to find the Midjourney server. Okay, no worries. You can do this as an alternative. Go to your browser and go to midjourney.com. From here, click on join the beta. And basically, that's it. You're going to be taken to the server. And just so it's easy to understand, let me join my server as well. I made this chat room for all of my students. So we're going to put in my name here, Chris Barron. And you're going to see my face. Click on it and then you can join it. Totally free, of course. So let's do a small recap. So first of all, you sign up for Discord, the free chat room program. Then you search for the Midjourney server, aka chat room, by using this compass icon in Discord or by going to that website, midjourney.com. Once you're here, this is how you can use Discord. So every chat room you're a part of is going to show here. In this example, we have two servers. This is mine, and you can see my thumbnail, and you can see this is the active one by checking out this symbol here. And underneath, you have various channels that I created to keep things organized. For example, if you want to talk about Photoshop, you can see we have a channel specifically made for that. But I also teach Figma. Again, there's a channel for that as well. If you want to say hi, there's introduce yourself. So these help me keep my chat room organized. Simply click on them to switch from room to room. So that's how you are basically on point. To switch to a different server, you're going to click here. Notice that here things are different from my server. 
we have rules, support, and so on. Now, the great thing about it is that you don't actually need any of this stuff with Midjourney. Go to any newbie room, and there you're gonna find the Midjourney bot. That's exactly how it's called. So you're gonna click on it to send it any message, any character, and just hit enter. And that's because we're gonna work in private mode. So this means we'll have to pay for it, but trust me, this is the only way to go. I'm sorry to say that the free plan is super limited and it forces you to go to a chat room that's being used by hundreds of people. And it's basically a nasty experience. It's so overwhelming, it's so difficult. So yeah, that's why we're gonna go for the paid plan to have a one-to-one -one conversation right here. Okay, we haven't paid yet, but uh, let's try to use Midjourney. So let's type in slash and then imagine, then hit the space bar. Prompt is gonna show up and that's totally fine, that's normal. Type in anything like car, for example, and hit enter. And just like that, you're gonna see that you're not allowed to do that because you haven't paid. No worries, we're gonna get the $10 plan. Click on this link, midjourney.com slash account. Sometimes it may not take you to your account, you may get this screen, but no worries, click on sign in, wait for the second, and then you're gonna be asked for some permissions. It's totally fine, go ahead, it's all safe. Okay, after that's done, you're gonna see midjourney.com slash account. This is the place to be. On the left, manage subscription is active. Switch to monthly billing and buy the $10 plan. If you have a VAT code, you can't add it for the initial purchase. You can only add it afterwards. So yes, you will have to pay VAT for your first month. Hit subscribe and once you put in your credit card information, you can go back to Discord and use the same command. Slash imagine, then car. Wait a while and this is gonna work. Check out the step-by-step -step guide in the PDF that's attached in case you need any help. Or you can also come to my Discord server and ask for help. But please, always, always use the general channel. We don't have that many students. There's not a lot going on, so it's quite easy to use the public channels. Please don't private message me. Okay, let's continue. Welcome back. I know that you want to jump ahead and get to the part where you can use Midjourney like a pro and it spits out exactly what you're looking for. But to get to that point, we need to establish a few things. So number one, range anxiety. Now, we'll get into details later on, but right now you should know there are three paid plans available on midjourney.com. Please start out with a basic plan that's $10 per month. You should have subscribed in the previous lecture. Then you're probably gonna upgrade to the $30 plan and this should be enough for most people. Now, you may not be happy about paying, but um, as I said, this is an investment into your future. For this course, you can stay on the $10 plan, but later on, you will need the $30 plan. Now, trouble is you have some limits, right? A certain number of images per month a certain number of hours. So this is where range anxiety comes in, exactly like with electric cars. You're not sure if you're gonna make it. Now, sometimes it's mostly in your head, right? Uh, you start to worry. Am I wasting it? Is this the right command in mid-journey? Should I do another version? And see, when bullets are scarce and precious, you begin to doubt yourself. You're no longer in learning mode. You're in anxiety mode. And I want you to know that's not the right approach, right? This is not the right mindset. So my advice is you fire away. And if you want to be completely okay, go for the $30 plan after you finish this one, where you're going to have unlimited bullets, so to speak. You can fire away nonstop. Now, there's a lot more to say, but I really wanted to address this part. Please don't limit yourself. Don't watch the timer. Don't watch how your resources are going down. Just work, explore, and try to have fun with it. And that's the second point I want to establish. So the second thing, explore what's possible. Now, most serious mid-journey users seem to agree that this is a tool for creative people, right? It's not going to replace designers altogether. It's a tool that can help you navigate difficult projects. 
Mid Journey helps you find the style, a color scheme, a look, a vibe. It's browsing for inspiration, but uh, in a more guided fashion. You tell it what you want, and then Mid Journey is going to come up with ideas. So this is useful for things like, I don't know, creating games, posters, animations, creating rough drafts. It's not that Mid Journey will never ever give you a finished result. It's more about having a meeting with 10 people and brainstorming, showing off various concepts and getting closer to a certain vision. In the past, skill designers took days and weeks to come up with a style, a look, a vibe. Then lots of people had a meeting and they said, oh, I don't know, maybe we need it in blue, maybe make it happier. Maybe in a different color scheme. And then skill designers were upset. They went back to the drawing board. They rinsed and they repeated this process. It was slow. It was expensive. It was frustrating. It was time consuming. Now with Mid Journey, you can accelerate all of that. The designer shows concepts that he made in maybe a few hours. The meeting is so much shorter and the final concept is approved much faster. So to sum this up, Mid Journey is unlikely going to replace all designers. It's likely going to be a tool that can help designers become more productive. And overall, it's going to speed up this creative process. So that's how you should look at it. Welcome back. Let's create our first images in Mid Journey. So let's start out with the basics. First of all, you've installed Discord and you can always find it in your taskbar. Even if you hit the X symbol, it's not actually going to close. It's just going to get minimized. Next, we always want to use the direct message feature so we won't get swamped by what's happening in the public channels. Here, the main command is slash imagine. After you're going to hit space, you're going to get prompt. This is how Mid Journey works. A prompt is a command, it's an instruction, and you can type in just about anything that you can think of. For example, let's use car. Once you've hit enter, your command is going to generate. Sometimes it's going to take a few seconds, other times it may take a few minutes. You will also see a percentage showing you your progress. When mid journey is done, you're going to get a notification, both the sound and the message. So you don't actually have to sit around and wait for it. Okay, let's do another prompt. So slash imagine red car. And after a while, you're going to get four more images. Now, before we continue, let's use this command slash settings. Currently, these are the available commands. What we want is the latest MJ version. And that's version 5 at the moment. MJ stands for mid journey. We want the standard quality and the style typically very high. The only other option right now for this specific plan, the $10 plan, is remix mode, which I encourage you to enable. More on that later on. Okay, back to our image creation. So let's use slash imagine red car in Paris with soft lights. Okay. So as you can see, we're adding a bit more details. We're building it up. The more details, the better the result, though at one point it can be counterproductive. More on that later. Every time you create something, you're going to get four photos. You can click on the image to get a better view. If that's not enough, you can use this tiny text here that says open in browser. And that actually really helps a lot. And in this latest version, the quality is quite high. Now, why for the photos? So you have options to choose from. Now, these are numbered one, two, three, and four. So if you're super happy with the bottom left one, that's actually number three. Now, say that we want to use it. Not a problem. In Discord, you're going to hit U3. You can remember U as upsampling, which simply means make it larger. After the short while, you can see the result, open it in your browser, and save the photo. Now, at this moment, the default size is 1024 by 1024. I'm going to show you how you can make it bigger through Photoshop later on. But uh, to recap, if you're happy with the image, hit U and its number. If you're not happy with it, hit V which stands for variation. 
For example, let's hit V2, which means we're gonna have a variation of image number two, this one. But um, rather than having a red car, let's go for the blue car, for example. We can also add various other details to get the photo that we're looking for. And because we've enabled remix mode, we get to do that. Now, if you disable remix mode, Midjourney is gonna randomly create a different version without being able to type anything differently. Now, unfortunately, remixing doesn't always give you the results you're looking for. And it's really important that you realize that from the start. Sometimes it's much better to start from scratch. So just use slash imagine blue car in Paris with soft lights and it's much more likely that you're gonna get a better photo. Now, in short, this is the entire approach in mid journey. There are a few other commands and choices, but we're gonna go through them step by step and you're gonna have cheat sheets as PDFs that you can always use to refresh your memory. But um, to recap, you can always use slash imagine and then you write what you want. Never think about how many bullets you have left in your account, how many images you can generate. You're gonna run out maybe in a week, maybe in two weeks, so you're likely gonna have to upgrade. But uh, it's a small price to pay considering this is cutting edge technology and you're basically paying for your education. I know it's not affordable, $10 or $30 per month, but uh, in a couple of months, you should be proficient. You should be great at it without being worried at, you know, your credits and how much you have left. And with that, let's continue. Welcome back. We understand that Midjourney isn't going to give us perfect results every single time. But there are some options for those who have an entrepreneurial spirit and want to make some money today. So let me give you some quick examples, even though I can't really recommend them. I really suggest that you look at Midjourney as something for the future, something that you're currently just learning, not making money right away. Okay, number one, it's coloring books. This is fairly easy to do. You generate 20 to 40 pieces, you package them in a nice cover, and basically you're golden. The great thing about it is that you can make coloring books based on themes, right? So princesses for young girls, abstract art for adults, cars for boys and so on the only limitation is your ability to sell them the product itself is going to be nice but you will need a store paid advertising and so on but yeah this is one of those things that's basically a slam dunk the second idea stickers these can be based on themes as well stickers are fairly cheap to produce you can make them into a set and sell them in a nice package Kids love stickers, so I'm sure that you can see the value in this approach. I found that Midjourney handles stickers quite nicely, actually. You will get some nice results. We can get into details about what style works best and how you can get very cute ones. But yeah, this is another very solid option that doesn't take a lot of time or experience. The third idea, print on demand. Think about posters or anything that can be framed. This is far better than the previous options because this is aimed at adults and you can make some interesting art that anyone can be proud to show off in their homes, on their walls. Think about super creative art, maybe abstract art, maybe even just a photo that's ultra sharp. So this is home decoration and you can do it fairly easy. Just set up a store with 20 to 40 pieces, use Shopify, Facebook ads, and then basically people choose from those pieces, make sure you have some lovely photos of them, maybe on a wall, and then you're good to go. You have a business. The fourth thing, t-shirts, super mega classic. Sure, it's a super saturated market because artists have been running this type of business for ages, but um, you can still make a decent living. This is what young people call a side hustle. You don't need any stock, just talk to an existing printing business and basically do a revenue split. Five, social media posts for the companies. Now, entrepreneurs are typically very busy and the company's social media is sometimes a clear indication of that. Most small to medium businesses need some help with their content, with their posts. Well, in comes Midjourney. You can make beautiful content that grabs your attention. This is best marketed as an ongoing service. Pay, I don't know, 300 bucks per month 
and you get, I don't know, 20 awesome posts. And I think I would actually pay for a service like this if I didn't know about it. Now, the internet is filled with other tips like this one, but um, it's again, not something that I actually recommend. It's not actually easy to get something like this up and running. Now, the product may be great, but your ability to market it is actually much more important. I personally know a few artists that draw amazingly well. They do watercolor, they do sketching, painting of all sorts, yet they struggle with their finances. They don't have that ability to market themselves and sell a whole lot. So basically, in the end, the takeaway is that even though the artwork may be universally beautiful, that doesn't mean it's gonna sell well. So that's why I don't recommend you jump into these things. Rather, approach them as a learning exercise. Focus on getting better at creating stuff to begin with. And after you're proficient, then you can explore the money-making activities. For now, just be aware of the possibilities and stay motivated. Let's continue. Welcome back. When you go to midjourney.com and you're logged in, you will find an area called Explore. Or if you're not logged in, you're gonna see a button that says Showcase. That's the same thing. Now, I have to say that this is incredible stuff. Gorgeous images that make you feel alive. It shows you what's possible. Trouble is, most of your results aren't gonna be this sharp. At least not at the beginning. That's why I want you to make sure you understand that this is gonna take some time. This will be frustrating at times. When you compare your work, your results with these ones, you're gonna be disappointed. No worries, this is part of the game. It's like learning how to swim or ride a bike. First of all, you're gonna swallow some water. You will scrape your knees and elbows. It's fine, you're gonna manage. Don't worry about it. But um, the great thing about this gallery is that you can see their prompts, if you're logged in, of course. Now, this is gonna feel a bit overwhelming because most of these prompts are crazy long and highly detailed. Previously, we said Red Car and Paris, but these guys are writing mini novels. And that's totally fine. You'll eventually get there. My advice is you look at these as sources of inspiration. And if you scroll down, you can see other examples that are somewhat similar. Let's take one of these prompts and just copy paste it and see what we get. This is quite important because based on these borrowed prompts, let's not call them stolen, um, you can actually take a shortcut. And as you can see, this is quite similar to the original one. And more than that, because we're using remix mode, we can actually choose to do a variation, say V3. So a variation of the third photo, that's the bottom left one and maybe add or remove a few things. And that's how we can make it into our own original photo without any moral questions. So to recap, if you absolutely love something from this showcase and you want your own version, simply copy paste the prompt. If it's too similar and you're not comfortable with that, then use the V buttons to make a variation. As a reminder, if you click on any V button, and you don't get this pop-up window, then that means that remix mode is not turned on. Use slash settings and you're gonna see remix mode. Click it and that's gonna give you the option to have that pop-up that allows you to add or remove stuff. One thing before we go, people like to sell guides that promise you to get these types of results. My advice, stick with this gallery and play with Midjourney as much as you can. As long as you're on the 10 or $30 plan, it's much better to simply generate loads of images rather than paying for guides. Welcome back. I get the fact that you want incredible results right from the start. So I'm gonna show you the best strategy right up front. Say that we want this beautiful style, right? I have no idea how to begin to describe it, what prompt I should use, right? I just saw it somewhere and I have no prompt for it, right? Maybe this is from a blog, maybe a stock image gallery, like Adobe Stock, maybe Shutterstock. So then what's next? How can we replicate that? Well, we're gonna use this command, slash describe. And then when you hit the space bar key, you're gonna have the option to upload any photo. This is by far the best shortcut in mid journey 
that will give you awesome results. Basically, this tells Midjourney, hey, I have this photo. How do you see it? How would you describe it? And then Midjourney is going to give you four options, four prompts. Now you can just click on any of them and then see the result. I like to click on all of them because I don't have any range anxiety. And most often than not, the photos are going to be quite similar. To be fair, at the moment, there are a few bugs. Sometimes the upload feature doesn't work. There are the upload errors here and there. But um, I'm sure this is just a temporary bug. Now, this is how you cut coordinates so you don't have to memorize any list of prompts. For example, angular, isometric, diorama, and whatever. To be honest, even I don't know what some of those words mean. And here's another thing. Sometimes Midjourney recognizes a style of an author. For example, let's use, I don't know, slash imagine a cat drawn in Picasso style. And then we'll see what that gives us. Picasso, 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 I think. Anyway, wait a moment and I think this is legit. But uh, the question is, how many artists do you know, right? So that's an issue. But uh, with the describe feature, you no longer have to do all of that heavy lifting. So here's how I like to work, especially for my social media posts. Go search for Adobe Stock. Well, simply type in your browser stock.adobe.com. If you just search for Adobe Stock, it may actually tell you the price of a share for the actual Adobe company. Anyway, right, we're here. Now, I'm a designer and say that I want to post something beautiful, something that's stunning. Uh, basically, that will grab people's attention, right? Pretty basic stuff. Let's go with exactly that, designer. Okay, I think we should switch to illustration mode though. One small note, you could potentially pay and get these images, you can use them, but uh, you have to pay a subscription. Trouble is, if you check out the pricing plan, especially the month to month one, the payment schedule, well, uh, you're gonna see it's quite expensive. It starts at 30 euro for three photos. Yeah, so to put that into perspective, for 30 bucks, you're gonna get unlimited photos in mid-journey. So paying for this type of subscription is very, very much expensive. So let's scratch that and go back to the list of results and download something. Just about anything that you like here. And now we can copy that style through mid-journey. It's really that easy. One thing to note is that mid-journey doesn't do well with text. Well, not in this version anyway, so try to avoid using any text. It's best that you remember that Midjourney is a tool in your arsenal. It's not the only one. It's not the end-all, be-all. You should also use Photoshop or some other different program to fine-tune your results, add text, and really make it your own, right? But with that, we now know that slash describe is one of the best ways of getting some awesome results. Just have a look and you're gonna see that this works wonders. If you're looking for similar sources of inspiration like Adobe Stock, I'm gonna have a PDF with a few links. But for now, this is my best shortcut. Let's continue. Welcome back. You may know that Midjourney is not the only player in the AI art game right now. And because we're human, we want the absolute best. We don't wanna miss out. We wanna pick the best team. Is the new iPhone better or the new Samsung? Maybe Huawei? Is it Mercedes or Lexus or BMW? Now, in this context, is it DALI, Stable Diffusion or Adobe Firefly? And the list grows every single month. Now, my advice is this. Please don't worry about it. Midjourney is one of the most popular ones. You can't really go wrong with it. There's no absolute best platform because it's way too early to call it. If you think about Figma versus Adobe XD, two programs that were built for the exact same purpose to design beautiful websites and apps, they were head to head for a number of years. But after a while, Figma simply shot past Adobe XD. It grew exponentially. People loved it, and this compounded into more and more users, content, tutorials, plugins, and so on. But um, it took a while. It took a few years. At this stage, it's way too early to see if Stable Diffusion 
may end up edging over the other competitors or if mid journey is going to keep its throne because at this point there's no doubt that at the moment mid journey is the king everybody is using it so i really wanted to take this moment and tell you to not complicate things and don't approach ai art with anxiety things are constantly going to change and we have to be okay with that change is always scary and uncomfortable for example, Mid Journey was launched on Discord and it was a bit of a pain to get used to it, right? But um, after you get comfortable with that, boom, just like that, they're going to launch their own website with a much friendlier interface. So all those settings and commands that you learned, well, they're going to be replaced with a much better, more intuitive interface. Easier to use overall, a lot better. So um, let's have a relaxed attitude, stick with mid journey for the moment and if there's ever the point where one competitor shoots up and blows mid journey out of the water, I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm keeping an eye on things. I have no horse in the game. I'm not betting on anyone. I'm here to learn alongside you and be on the cutting edge of tech. Now if I had to choose one, I would probably root for Adobe Firefly. And that's because Adobe Firefly is going to get integrated with Photoshop, maybe even Adobe Illustrator. The future seems bright. But again, I'm not betting on anyone. I'm not betting on any program. I'm just observing and I'm learning and I'm growing as a designer. And with that, let's continue. Welcome back. For most people, the size of Midjourney's photos may be okay. The standard is 1024 by 1024. If you use Midjourney 4, you could potentially use an upscaler that takes you up to 2048 by 2048, but I don't really recommend it. Even so, that may not be enough for specific cases. For example, if you want to print something, uh, that's not going to be enough. Now, there are some tools on the web that promise you great results when you want to enlarge something. Trouble is, they cost quite a lot, or they're based on a subscription service, or they simply don't work that well. Let me give you one example. Topaz Gigapixel is one of the most well-known ones, and right now it's $99 per year. And I haven't used it, but um, I do have to say that I don't recommend it. Here's why. Now, first of all, free is out of the question. Free stuff doesn't work, right? Especially for enlarging photos. Now sure, you may get a free trial here and there. It's probably only going to give you a few images to test it. But um, if you're in it for the long run, what's the solution and why don't I recommend this or that? Well, it's actually quite simple. Photoshop is the solution. Photoshop is, in my book, one of the best investments. It's only $10 per month and it offers you a world of options. For example, you can 10x your images, maybe even more, and you're gonna get besides that a literal boatload of other features. Now, let me show you how this enlarging works. We're just gonna focus on that, but again, there are so many other features in Photoshop that, you know, $10 per month, it's nothing. Okay, now, if you're not paying for the Photoshop, what I'm about to tell you isn't gonna work. So I'm using the latest Photoshop version at the moment and I'm going to open an image with Control o This image is from Midjourney. Now I can quickly check the size with this shortcut and again it's not all that great, 1024. Not a problem. Go to the top menu to filter. If this is grayed out, you may not have a subscription or you may need to do this. First, convert for smart filters. Okay, now let's open up Neural Filters from the same menu. A new section in Photoshop that's gonna be filled with AI, machine learning, overall magical goodness. You're gonna love this stuff. Again, for only 10 bucks per month. Now, from here, we're gonna look for the Super Zoom. This is what we want. Flip this switch to enable it, Super Zoom. Then simply click on this icon here to enlarge it. You can go for the crazy values like 10x, though I would suggest that you keep it on the lower end. Keep in mind that the higher the multiplier, the more the Photoshop has to think. You're going to see a bar at the bottom to show you your progress, and after a while, you're going to get the new file. Before we get to it, you're going to see some of these options right here, 
to enhance the photo. You can remove some of the inevitable noise that's gonna creep in. You can sharpen it a bit and so on. Again, this is one of the best ways to enlarge a photo by quite a lot. Now, in my everyday work, I like to keep the multiplier set at 4x. So that's 1496 by 1496. More than enough for most situations, even for printing stuff. Now, in previous Photoshop versions, enlarging a photo, which is officially called upsampling, would give you blurry, soft edges, various artifacts. In short, it was a mess. Now, with neural filters, the results are great. Now, if you look at it, it's not impeccable, right? It's not 100% perfect, like this was made in Adobe Illustrator, for example. But uh, yeah, overall, it's solid stuff. By the way, always choose to show the result in a new document. So this is the best way to 10x your images from mid-journey. Use Photoshop, use Super Zoom, and you're gonna be good to go. This is why I don't recommend any other service like Topaz or any other platform. Good luck with it and have fun. Welcome back. As I said at the start of the course, Midjourney is not the end-all be-all. It's a tool that works well with other tools, specifically Photoshop. Here I have this lovely image. Here's the prompt on screen in case you want something similar. Now, this is quite alright, but it's not amazing. It's also quite small. 1024 by 1024, the standard size from Midjourney. Well, let's enlarge it three times by going to the top menu to filter. From here, click on Convert for Smart Filters. Okay, now use the same menu and from here, click on Neural Filters, like in the previous lecture. Next, we're gonna flip this switch called Super Zoom. By the way, please, please don't work on a laptop. Get a desktop computer with two 24-inch displays running at 2K if you want an ideal setup. That's what I consider to be the best possible scenario. If you're thinking about buying a new laptop, a desktop computer provides much more value for money, better performance, you can upgrade it, in short, it's a lot better. I know that some people need mobility, but most of the time you could actually benefit a lot more from a desktop computer. Anyway, back to it. We'll make this three times as big and then we're gonna open it in a new document. Okay, now that we're here, let's use Control z though to fit the design to the screen. Okay, now go to the same main menu to filter, but this time around choose Camera Raw Filter. This is gonna load up in a second. And now, right here, we have a world of possibilities. First of all, we can click on this button that says Auto, from the top right side. And then Photoshop will do its own thing. If you don't like it, you can click it again to reset. But um, actually, this is quite okay as a starting point. Next, I would love to have a bit more texture. So I'm gonna use this slider. I'm gonna use a generous value, a bit too much to be honest, but uh, that way you can really see what's going on through the screen recording. We can zoom in and move from side to side to really see what's going on. We can add a lot more color by using this saturation slider as well. Take your time with it. There are no right or wrong edits. As long as you don't exaggerate, you're gonna be good to go. There's a bunch of other edits that we can apply, but um, I think I'm gonna raise up the temperature so we can get that warm, soft glow. And in short, that's the power of Photoshop. Well, Camera Raw to be more specific. Hit OK and have a look at the result. And just to show you a glimpse of the power of Photoshop, hit this icon that looks like the yin yang symbol that's at the bottom of the layers panel. Now from this place, choose this option called Hue and Saturation. And now we can play with this slider here, and this changes the image quite a lot. Now, assuming that we're happy and you're all done, you wanna export it. To do that, go to File, and then Export, and then obviously finally export as. My advice, choose PNG and now you're good to go. Now, obviously this wasn't a complete Photoshop tutorial. I actually have a complete course on that. I'm an Adobe certified instructor and an Adobe certified expert in Photoshop with a diploma and everything. But uh, yeah, in short, you can use the power of Photoshop to really take your mid-journey photos to the next level.
not to mention the fact that here you can add some text and really make it stand out, plus a whole lot of other things. Now my advice, invest in programs that have a future. And trust me, Photoshop still has a long bright future. Midjourney will continue to improve, sure, but so will Photoshop. And Midjourney was never meant to replace Photoshop. As I said, these are two different tools that actually work well together. Peanut butter is totally fine, right? But then when you add some jelly, you get a delicious sandwich. And that's Photoshop and Midjourney together. Have fun with it. Welcome back. Getting the right aspect ratio is quite simple in Midjourney and it's all a matter of adding a special command. And that's double hyphen AR space and then something like 16 by 9. AR is short for aspect ratio. So let's say that we want a portrait photo, right? Say a wallpaper for your phone. This means tall and thin. So 9 by 16. The code for that would be something like, imagine red sports car hyphen hyphen AR, spacebar, that's quite important, then 9 by 16. Please be aware there's no space between the hyphen and AR, but there is a space here. And just like that, the photo is basically awesome. So that's aspect ratio. By default, Midjourney gives you a one-to-one -one aspect ratio which basically means a square image. You can make it tall and thin, like I just mentioned here, or you could flip it and go for 16 by nine, or three by two. Let's try that out. Keep in mind, I'm using Midjourney 5 here that allows for absolutely every single aspect ratio. The previous version only allowed squared ones, three by two and two by three. So quite limited choices, but now with this one, complete freedom. Now here's something beginners struggle with. Say that you love this blue car, version 2, so the top right one, right? But um, you actually need it for your phone, so a different aspect ratio. Well, now you know the command, right? Plus we have remix mode enabled, so this means that if we click on V2, we're gonna get this pop-up. And indeed, here it is. And we can see our command says 3x2. So we can simply replace those numbers, right? We can simply go 9 by 16, so portrait mode, tall and thin. But um, here's the thing, Remix doesn't actually work well with aspect ratio. You saw that at the beginning of the course as well, when we tried to make the car from red to blue. Actually, in this case, it will simply distort the image, and this is clearly not what we want. As you can see, this is not acceptable. This is a reminder that we are not dealing with any type of super intelligence that understands exactly what we want. This is a very capable set of algorithms, but um, it's far from perfect. So what can you do if you want a different aspect ratio? Well, the easiest way and what I recommend is to start from scratch. Start again with slash imagine and put in the same prompt. Or better yet, we know that we can use the describe command. So we're gonna hit U2 and then save that image onto our computer. Then we're gonna use the describe command and upload it. Now you're gonna get a prompt and because we're using remix mode, once again, you hit any of these versions and you can modify the aspect ratio. Still, it may not give you exactly the same style, but chances are you're gonna be close and most of the time you're gonna have to be happy with that. Again, mid-journey is not perfect. So that's why I mentioned at the start that this can be frustrating. You know what you want, you just need a small tweak. But that small edit takes ages to get. Well, as you go through the course and practice more and more, you'll be able to get better and better results. But uh, for now, it's not going to be perfect. You will have to accept that. Let's take a quick break. Welcome back. One of the best things that you can do in Midjourney that has loads of practical uses is to create patterns. Seamless, repeatable patterns. These are great for the Etsy shops, for the shirts of all sorts, social media posts, 
book covers, you name it. The magic command is double hyphen style. Let's try this out. Let's go with minimalistic fruit outline pattern and then we're gonna add the tile command, just like that. Now, the great thing about it is that you can really get creative and use various things to get loads of results. Now, let's assume that we like one of these guys, say number two. Okay, now we're gonna have to download them, right? And as before, I think Photoshop is one of the best tools for the job. It's just one of the many things it can do. Now, here's how you can easily use this pattern in any design. Once you have the photo saved on your computer, you have to open up Photoshop. It's quite important that you don't have any projects opened. Drag the image inside it, drag and drop, or better yet, use Control O. O for the open. The next step is to go to the main menu to edit. Okay, from here, scroll all the way down until you see define pattern. And really, it's that simple. You're gonna get a pop-up, and this asks us for the name, but I'm just gonna hit OK. Now, it's time to test it out, and to see if it's really seamless, right, repeatable. Now, to keep it simple, I'm gonna start a new project with Control n Any settings will do. Next, I'm gonna double-click this background layer in the Layers panel. You can see the lock icon next to it, so that means that we need to unlock it. Okay, hit OK, and now we can apply the pattern. This is how it goes, one super simple way. Use this icon that says Effects from the bottom of the Layers panel. From this new list, choose Pattern Overlay. We are gonna get a bunch of options here, but what we want is quite simple. Select the last entry from this window. The rest is set exactly like you see here, 100% opacity, normal blending mode, nothing special. But um, you could potentially change the angle in case you want to rotate it. That may work well in certain cases. But yeah, really, it's that simple and indeed it's seamless. It looks great and we can use it absolutely everywhere on any size. Now let's go back to Mid Journey and create another one. Let's go with something completely random. So colorful geometric pattern, right? By the way, the word pattern isn't mandatory, but uh, it does help. Remember to add the tile command and let's wait and see what's up. Now, awesome patterns are quite tricky to find, but with Mid Journey, it's no longer an issue. Okay, this one seems lovely. Let's download it and go through the motions once again. Remember, get the file on your computer, then launch Photoshop and use Ctrl O to open the pattern. Then go to the top menu to edit. Go near the bottom and look for Define Pattern. Here it is. Okay, hit OK and now we can use it. I'm gonna make a new project once again, any settings will do, but this time around I'm gonna confine the pattern to a specific area. Get the rectangle tool, hotkey U. U, rectangle, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but uh, that's been the shortcut, that's been the hotkey for ages in Photoshop. Anyway, drag any random shape, any rectangle, and finally we can click on the FX button and then apply a pattern overlay, and basically that's how you do it. This is one of the most powerful ways to use Midjourney without giving it away. You know, if you don't want people to know that you used an AI generator, this keeps your secret safe. And you can find loads of celebrities making merch with these types of patterns. Maybe add a bit of text, inspirational or whatever, and all of a sudden you're creating something awesome. A clothing line or whatever, a personal brand. Good luck with it and show me your patterns. I'd love to see some. Thank you. Welcome back. Let's have a look at our settings so we're both on the same page. The default is version 5 at the time of this recording. The best mode for realistic photos and beautiful imagery. But um, what if you're looking for the specific style? Well, anime is actually built into Midjourney. Simply switch to Niji 5, that's N-I-J-I 5, the latest one at the time of this recording, and you are gonna be amazed. Let's write something like a cute girl walking in the rain, holding a teddy bear with a warm sunset in the background. So this is fairly descriptive, but nothing too exaggerated. 
Now, while this is being generated with the Niji setting, let's switch back to MJ5. Yes, you can actually do that. You don't have to let the job finish. And we can run multiple operations at once, three to be exact. So I'm just gonna paste the same prompt. Absolutely nothing has changed, except we switched from Niji to MJ. By the way, I'm not sure if you pronounce it Niji or something else. Sorry for that. Okay, now the results are incredibly different. You can see why this is best used for anime. Of course, it's also a great choice if you want to do fun animal stickers that are lifelike. There are loads of other cases. And I feel like this is one of the best uses for Mid Journey and for the AI art in general. Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a personal rant that has little to do with Mid Journey, so you may want to skip ahead. This is it. I'm not big on anime. I watched Sailor Moon when I was five or six. I grew up on Dragon Ball Z, the dubbed version. I really appreciated Castlevania most recently, or the One Punch Man. But uh, yeah, I'm 100% a rookie. I have little knowledge of this world. But uh, having said that, I've watched a few documentaries about what really goes on behind these animes, about these artists, you know, and they really work their hands off. They spend years perfecting their craft, and only the best ones make a decent living out of it. It's an incredible journey. This is where Mid Journey comes in, and these artists can focus more on the storytelling side. This is how true artists can search for different styles or looks to translate their thoughts and ideas into something real. And I believe that this type of art generation will give us a better experience through better content. To go even deeper, I'm tired of seeing the same rebooted movies over and over just for the money. Now, I'm hopeful that truly creative people with original ideas can leverage these new technologies, including mid-journey, so they can create stuff that would otherwise cost a fortune. So yeah, Niji 5 is great for the anime, and hopefully you can put it to good use to make something lovely. I especially like the cute characters that I can create based on animals. But yeah, the sky is the limit. Your imagination is the only limit. So I really hope that we can all enjoy better content by using Mid Journey. Welcome back. I want to address something that I've struggled with for quite a while and you may be in the same situation. And that's getting the same person through multiple prompts. For example, if you want to do a comic book or any type of situation where there's a person and you want to maintain that person's face characteristics, right? Now, I followed loads of guides and there are options out there through which you can kind of keep the same person, but not really. So um, I want to take this moment and say if you're in love with a specific face, it's quite unlikely that you can generate loads of scenes with the same person in it. This is why most people try to lower the quality, so the face isn't really all that recognizable. Basically, you choose a style that omits details on purpose. Think about South Park, right? Stan and Kyle are basically identical in terms of their face. The only thing that changes is their hat and obviously that voice. Actually, if you put the same hat on Butters and slap on some gloves, it's the same character. Now, storytelling doesn't actually need all of these intricate details. But back to Mid Journey, the platform doesn't have a memory. It doesn't remember things. Yet. I'm sure that may change in the future, but as of now, no matter what techniques you apply, you won't be able to faithfully have the same person with specific facial features across multiple prompts. I thought I was doing something wrong because some people say it's doable, but um, in most cases, results aren't replicable. You may get lucky here and there, but as of now, there's no surefire way of saving a character and reusing it over and over again. Think about the girl sitting down, then have her in the rain, then have her in a city, then in a train, and so on. It's really, really difficult to have the same person. Um, can it look similar? Sure, but it's not gonna be the same person. So for now, my advice is you scratch that off. It's much better to focus on the style itself rather than specific traits. Let's continue. 
Welcome back. In this current version of Mid Journey 5, you can use Stylize to change your results. This is done by adding a double hyphen S, then an empty space, then a number from 0 to 1000. Now, when you read the official description of this parameter, things aren't all that clear. So, low values produce images that closely match the prompt, but they're less artistic. And high values create images that are very artistic, but they're less connected to the prompt. Now, let's see what that means by way of examples. First of all, I'm gonna type in slash settings so we can check what's up. We wanna use MJ5, but I also wanna set this style to medium, which right now clears the current suffix. Notice that right now we only have V5 here, which means this will automatically be added after every prompt. Now, if we choose style very high, then we're gonna immediately get S750. Now, I wanna be able to manually control that, so it's essential that we go for med, which is short for medium. And if you go for low, that's actually 50, so that's not okay. But um, let's say that you can't manage to clear this suffix. What now? No worries, there's a command for that. So type in slash suffix, and you're gonna get this command prefer suffix, select it, but then we're gonna leave it empty. That's gonna clear it. Now, how do we know that's gonna work? Well, it actually says so right here. Suffix will add various parameters at the end of every prompt to save us time. But um, if you don't want any, just hit enter. And then you should get a message saying suffix is now removed. Right, so let's reset it to V5 and no style by way of style medium. Okay, now, I have two prompts. The first one is a cute girl walking in the rain, holding a teddy bear with a warm sunset in the background. Okay, next I'm gonna add S0, 100, 300, 500, 750, and 1000. I won't make you wait, so here are the results. So zero should give us less artistic results that match our description. Well, the pattern that I see here is that the girl is walking away. Better said we don't see her face. The background is also quite blurry. 100 brings in a bit more richness to the results, but the background is still blurry and the differences are quite small. 300 is where we get to see the face. We clearly see more details. We do have more details here. 500 is yet another small improvement, but uh, it is an improvement. Same thing with 750. But notice the girl is closer to us. Quite nice. And finally, 1000. Well, it's just better overall. Now, in this case, from 0 to 1000, the results aren't really night and day. Stylize isn't really a grading system, the likes of 480p, 720p, 1080p, or whatever, you know. Um, or a scorecard where 1000 means an A or a 10 out of 10. It's just a different way to interpret the prompt. Now, let me show you the second prompt, which is isometric workspace of a designer, vibrant, colorful, computer desk person. Now, this is gonna help us a lot more. Now, in this case, the Z01 S0 shows us a fairly simple, basic result. This is something most people could design in Photoshop after some basic training and a bit of willpower. 100 brings in a lot more detail, but um, the colors are still a bit too neon-like, too shouty in your face. The shadows are quite crude. The sizing in one of these photos is off. Overall, not that great. By the way, notice these lines here. That's a watermark. These lines are there to protect the photo from being stolen. Um, this is a sign that Midjourney is still using stock photos as a source of inspiration. And stock photos are not free. That's a bit tricky, maybe we'll discuss it later on. Moving on, 300 is starting to look great. This is where you should begin with. 300 is a solid starting point, especially this last one here. Now, where S0 took maybe 10 minutes for someone to make, this one would take a couple of hours for an actual person to make it. S500 is a place where all four options are actually super solid. And 750 is a marginal improvement. But um, yeah, by the way, hit up those lines yet again. Not great. 
Finally, 1000 seems to be a small upgrade. So from S500, the results are very likely what you're looking for. This command truly shines when you start having mile-long prompts with loads of details and the platform isn't giving you what you want. I typically keep my stylized setting on 750 because I'm not looking for literal stuff. I'm using mid-journey for the inspiration rather than a specific thing that I have in mind. Welcome back. We've seen MJ5, we've seen Niji for the anime style, but what about these other models? MJ Test and MJ Test Photo. Well, in short, these are temporary versions that are going to give you a very different result. Let me run both of these with the previous prompt from above. As you recall, we were quite happy with anything from 300 upwards. Now, the trouble with these test models is that they're unpredictable, and even if you spend a lot of time figuring them out, they may change, they may get removed, and so on. More than that, they have several limitations. The aspect ratio is limited, for example. It's either square, so 1 to 1, 3 by 2, or 2 by 3. So that means you can't get wide photos, you can't get portrait photos in the sense of having them tall and thin, so it's not great. Okay, when you look at the results, these are vastly different than the ones from MJ5 with different style values applied. Now, do they look nice? Hmm, yeah, I think they're decent, but um, I don't really recommend these test models unless you just want to have fun and you want to explore various options and choices. As I said at the beginning, I'm approaching AI art as an investment into my future. Learning how to use these models is quite important, but um, we do need some predictability, right? For example, MJ6 is just around the corner, right? But um, there's a very high chance that most of what's available in MJ5 will still apply. Now, for the test models, from what I understand, that may not be the case. Another limiting factor is the number of results. As you can see, we only get two rather than four. And as for the stylized command, it ranges from 1250 to 5000. So my advice, leave this at the very end of your learning. I'm addressing it right now because I'm sure they caught your attention. Moving on, you may start to get range anxiety because that's something that everybody goes through. If you've been working along and generating images, your resources might be going down. If you want to see how much you have left, you can use slash info, and that's really going to help. And you're going to see fast time remaining, a certain number of minutes and the percentage. Now, do we care? No, we shouldn't. No, we don't care about it. And that actually brings us to relaxed mode. That's a setting here. When you get started, you're going to buy the smallest available pack. Right now, 10 bucks. That has a certain number of resources included but um, they're all in fast mode, meaning it's going to generate your results in no time at all. But here's the thing, being at the front of the line has certain costs involved. But here's the thing, if you're not in a hurry, so relaxed mode, you actually get unlimited images. So once you burn through all those fast hours, you can still work, but you're going to need a bit more patience. And at this moment, I really do mean it's just a bit more patience. It's not a night and day difference in speed, but overall, it's noticeable. Now, to sum this up, if you don't want to feel that range anxiety, you're going to have to pay eventually for that $30 plan, and then you can switch to relaxed mode. The basic $10 per month plan does not give you relaxed mode. You can't switch to relaxed mode, so this means that you won't be able to get unlimited photos for the basic plan. Now, could you potentially get more fast hours in the $10 per month plan? Actually, yes, you could rate some images and you might get some bonuses a few hours here and there. But my advice is you take the $10 hit, you use them all up when that happens two, three, four weeks, then upgrade to the $30 plan and then go to relax mode. Here's the thing, after two, three months, you should be proficient you should be great at it. So I'd rather not spend any time on grinding away getting small bonuses, just pay the price. Okay, what about the stealth mode? Well, this is available in the biggest plan at the time of this recording. That's 60 bucks per month. And it's mainly for people who need privacy. Here's the thing, 
This may be great for adult content. It may be sensitive content. It may be work for a company that doesn't know that you're using AI generators. Um, here's the thing. Even though we're in a private conversation in Discord, us with the bot, all your work is visible on midjourney.com. So if you need to keep things private for your work, for example, then you're going to need this stealth mode. My advice, there's no need for it unless you're working for the giant company making loads of money. And in that case, 60 bucks won't matter anyway. But yeah, most people get the $10 plan, then eventually upgrade to the 31 and switch to relax mode, unlimited photos, and that's it. Now, at the end of the day, I'm going to stick with the latest mainstream model, MJ5, and that's what I suggest you do as well. Don't worry about these other ones because they're temporary. Welcome back. Let's talk about the quality setting because it may actually fool you. First of all, let's use the settings command and come back to the MJ5 model and set the stylized function to very high. Next, we'll use a previous prompt just so we can do a comparison if needed. Right, now quality can be adjusted by adding Q from quality and the standard is 1. You can also do 0.5 or 0.25, but uh, there's also two times, so double quality. Now, the question is, does the maximum quality always give you better results? In short, for realistic photos, yes. Let me show you the results of a series of prompts, starting with a quarter quality, so 0.25. The prompt is a cute girl walking in the rain holding a teddy bear with a warm sunset in the background. Decent. Now, please notice the empty spaces, quite important. Okay, so these aren't all that great. They generate super fast, and that's the only redeeming quality. If you can't really afford the $30 plan, using lower quality will save you some GPU hours. In short, 0.25 is obviously four times faster to generate, and it only consumes a quarter of your minutes in terms of GPU power. But uh, for realistic work, it's really not that great, so let's move on to 0.5, so half quality. This is quite decent. The results are respectable, usable. You can see a watermark in the first image. That's not great. The third one is quite good, though the teddy bear seems to not have any legs, which is a bit weird. Overall, quite okay though. The regular quality standard stuff is lovely. In the image, you can see how the rain is dripping from her jacket. Her hair is quite wavy. It has quite a few strands because it's wet. Um, the teddy bear is also dripping. If you have a look at the bottom left side, this is actually great stuff. The third and fourth images are equally awesome. So this is what most people expect in terms of quality. And uh, when you compare it to the 0.25 version, well, the difference is immense. But um, what about twice the quality? Does that give us sharp 4K images? Actually, no. It's the same resolution and the sharpness of the image has more to do with your prompt. Still, if we look at the second image, the sun is shining in a way where the bear is glowing. And that's quite nice. The road has loads of details. The fourth image also has a lot going on in terms of its vibe. Now, is it twice as nice? Is it worth consuming your images, your bullets, twice as fast? I don't think so. It's maybe 20% better, maybe 30% better, but most people use this double quality as a crutch for using not so great prompts to get better results, but they burn through their GPU time, through their available resources. So my advice is you stick to the basic quality, so Q1, at least for realistic photos. Having said that, a lack of detail is not really a problem if your style warrants it. For example, I'm going to use the following prompt. A red car in a dark city with neon lights, manga style. Now, keep in mind, I'm using MJ, not Niji. Style is set to 750, and I'm going to use half quality. The result is actually quite okay. This works well, and there are countless other situations where it may be okay to use half quality. A quarter? Uh, I don't think so. But half, sure, watercolor images, whimsical styles, kid-friendly styles, sure. Just look at The Simpsons, for example. That's a super simple style that most people love. But um, just so we're clear, 
I'm going to use the same red car prompt set to Q1 rather than 0.5. Let's compare these two and see what we get. Now, in Q1, you're going to notice a bit more sharpness, more detail in the reflections. But um, put this in another way. If this was part of a story in a comic book or whatever, does this change in quality really make a difference from half to standard? I'm going to let you be the judge of that. But now you know that you can adjust your quality through this command. Just use Q. 0 0.5, 1, or in rare situations, 2 times, 2. Welcome back. Let's learn about a new parameter that can really help us get what we want. And that's chaos. Chaos can be used by adding a double hyphen, then an empty space, then a number from 0 to 100. Now, by default, this is set to 0. Let me show you an example. I'm going to use the following prompt in the latest version of Mid Journey with stylized set to very high. So, this is what I'm going to use a beautiful beach with tropical trees and blue water. Because chaos ranges from 0 to 100, I'm going to go for the 100, 50, and 10. Now, here's how this works if you use a very low chaos value, you're going to get just about the same design but with very slight changes. Notice the angle is just about the same. We have a tree in the top left side that's sort of hanging low. We get the same bluish water in every one of these choices. In short, low chaos means you really know what you want. Your prompt is very, very good. You have a very clear idea about what you need. And basically, you tell Midjourney, hey, please follow my instructions closely. Now, jumping to chaos 100, so the maximum value. Well, the results are quite different, vastly different. The water is sometimes blue, sometimes green. Sometimes it's transparent. We get a hanging tree, but we do get multiple trees as well. The images have different approaches for the same prompt. This means that it's best to start your exploration with very high chaos values, then see what you're looking for, narrow it down. If you don't like any of these four high chaos values, Simply hit this button to get more options. Now remember, that's the point of mid-journey. To explore various options and get your creative juices flowing. Now, can you choose the first option and be done with it? Yeah, sure, of course. But most of the time, you want to have a relaxed approach. You want to try things out. And after you get a better idea of what you're doing, maybe after three, four, five versions, then you start refining it. Based on those versions, you're going to get closer and closer. But remember, you can also download any image and use the describe function, which should get you even closer to your goal. But um, I repeat, as you nail the concept, use lower values or just keep it to the default, which is zero. When you're starting out, Chaos 100 is probably best. I'm quite sure this is going to become the new default, Chaos 100. But we'll see about that. Anyway, good luck with it. Welcome back. I want to show you a technique through which you can really have some fun. We are going to use our own images to create some interesting avatars. Keep in mind, this is for having fun. It's not really aimed at creating a perfect replica of our face. So let me show you how this works. First of all, you find a nice image of yourself. I'm going to use this one. Then I'm going to drag it into this conversation with the Mid Journey bot. This is quite important because the photo needs to be somewhere on the web. Okay, now we can right click it and we'll have a few options, but we're only interested in this one, copy link. Basically, we now have a URL where this photo is hosted. Great. Next, the simplest command is this. We're going to go for slash imagine, then we're going to paste that link. Now, as a side note, you could also use a Dropbox link that ends in a 1, not with a 0. Okay, next, we're going to add a few words. I'm going to go for random stuff. Let's use neon background, modern, creative, colorful. And I'm going to run it in two styles. Niji 5, so anime mode, and then the MJ5 model. I'm going to show you the end results so we can save a bit of time. Now, the Niji version as well, <laughs> it's really out there. Um, as I said at the beginning of this video, it's fun, it's playful, it's not really meant to be taken seriously. 
Now, this anime style is really going to be entertaining for those who appreciate this style. In terms of resemblance, well, I can't really say that I see one. Now, going to the MJ version, well, this is much more realistic. It's something you would expect to see in a Facebook announcement regarding the metaverse, but um, this is quite usable. Plus, it sort of looks like me. Sort of. Now, can we take this to a different level? Sure, we can use multiple images to show Midjourney how we really look. We can use a different chaos level and a different stylized value. But for now, I just want to keep it simple and let you have some fun with it. Please, try it out for yourself and post the result. Remember, drag an image of you, then copy the link. Use the imagine command, paste the link, then add a few words. The main thing is you be relaxed with it and enjoy the process. Now, are we wasting our resources from the basic plan? Now, sure, you could look at it that way, but right now it's a matter of getting used to the platform. So get to work and I hope to see some of your own photos. Thank you. Welcome back. Adding weight is quite important, especially in very long prompts. Before we get deep into it, let's start out slow. We're using the latest MJ model with very high quality. Now, let's go with a simple prompt. Sunflower. Two words. And we're using S750. Now, as you would imagine, this is gonna give us the plant that gives us sunflower seeds. This is quite easy to get, right? But um, what if we want a flower in the sun? Of course, we could potentially rewrite the prompt and use more appropriate language, exactly like I just said it, a flower in the sun, right? But um, we could potentially try this. We can assign a level of importance by using a double colon. So I'm gonna use sun one and flower four. Now, while this is rendering, let me explain the numbers. There isn't a range per se, though most people use anywhere from minus five to plus five. And you can even do half values, like minus 0.5. Now, another thing, you can use 1 and 4, like I did here, or you could use 150. And in our example, 1 and 4 means that the flower is four times as important as the sun. 150 is the same thing as 2 and 1. So double the importance. So it's all relative. It's a comparison between the terms themselves. Looking at the result, it's quite clear that the flower was the star of the show. The sun, little to none. Now let's flip this around and go for the sun with a weight of 5 and a flower with a weight of 1. This doesn't always work, but um, I hope that you're gonna get the point. In these situations, it's quite easy to understand how weight works, how it attributes importance. Well, emphasizing the sun doesn't seem all that great but uh, it still follows our instructions. Let's do this again with cheesecake. First, the standard one, and then we're gonna do a two to one weight. First of all, we're gonna favor the cheese, and then we're gonna favor the cake. Now, the results are gonna be drastically different because mid-journey follows our weights. The standard prompt is a beautiful dessert, a cheesecake, right? Now, when we emphasize cheese, well, we get a lot of cheese and just about no cake. And then when we focus on the cake, well, basically it's a cake made out of cheese. Weird stuff, but yeah, that's how it goes. Now let's do something a bit more complicated. Let's imagine a girl running through a city being chased by aliens in a spaceship. The girl has a weight of five, the city nothing, the aliens three, the spaceship two. So we're looking for the girl to be the main star of the show, hence why it gets a 5. Aliens are next, so they get a 3. Then the spaceship only gets a 2. And finally the city, 1. 1 is the default. And the result is sort of okay. Now, as you add more and more characters, Midjourney has a harder time generating something that you're looking for, especially when you have several characters, right? But uh, yeah, for now, this is our result. But let's flip this. Let's go with a girl, two, running through a city, nothing, being chased by aliens, three, and then in a spaceship, five. Now the spaceship is going to be the main focus, then aliens, then finally the girl. Keep in mind, there is a potential for the girl to not show up because most of the time, mid-journey does tend to value the first words in the prompt. Okay. 
past full of love and well the city isn't actually showing up maybe just a glimpse here and there and that's because it's being assigned the default value because we requested an emphasis on the spaceship that takes up most of the design then the aliens well sort of it's kind of tied together with spaceship i might have expected something like real aliens as individuals right as characters but um that didn't work out let's flip this one final time let's go with aliens 5 spaceship 3 girl 2 this should give us some aliens okay as you can see this is how you learn to use mid journey you experiment with different commands, parameters, prompts, and you inch your way forward bit by bit. The more predictable this is gonna be. And yes, this gets us closer to aliens, but only just. Of course, we can always remix and try out a few more times, add a few more details, but I'm happy to show you half wins and half fails as well. This is a big part of mid journey. And even though I've spent loads of hours on several accounts, I still miss the mark from time to time. And I prefer to show you that not everything works. So this is word weight. Make sure you triple check your spelling and always check the spacing. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Good luck with it. Welcome back. We've known about word weights and how it can help us prioritize certain parts of the prompt. But uh, what if you're constantly getting too much of something, right? The best approach would be to rewrite the prompt. For example, in the aliens prompt, we might replace that with extraterrestrials or something like that because the spaceship is also alien, right? So that may be a confusing part for the mid journey. So rewriting may get you a better outcome. But um, here's another way to go about it. Excluding certain concepts by using the no command, NO. Basically, no is the same thing as putting minus 0.5. So if you write a prompt, maybe fill the flowers without anything else, just the regular MJ5 classic engine and then S750, you're gonna get a bunch of flowers, of course, right? But what if you don't want a specific type of flowers? Well, to keep this easy to follow, I'm gonna use no yellow. Wait a moment and you're gonna get exactly that. Now, please be aware that if you don't use the double hyphen, you'll actually get a lot of yellow. Okay. Let me show you what that would look like. So this is one of those things that really requires practice. How you use these commands when you leave an empty space and when you don't, it's quite important. Always make sure you pay close attention to that. If the result is really unexpected, then you might have missed something, a space or something. But yeah, the correct one shows little to no yellow. You could revert to using digits. Flowers could be 5 and yellow might be minus 5, just in case you really, really hate yellow. This is quite an extreme example because yellow is actually quite a common color in the field of flowers. This is why I used it. Now, please be aware that you can't simply do minus 5 yellow because you need to balance it out. You need a prompt that is overall 0 or positive. So that's why I use minus 5 and then plus 5. And indeed, this gives us zero yellow flowers, absolutely none. Now, how do we see this no command? Well, I think you should think about stereotypes, right? Positive and negative ones. So if you think of anime in Japan, I don't know, you might get a lot of neon lights, right? Um, if you think about Paris, you may get the Eiffel Tower. Now, in certain situations, it's best to exclude the first thing that comes to mind, the stereotype especially if you're looking for something that's original because think about it millions of people are using this platform you don't want to be cheesy you don't want to get something that everybody else is getting for example unsplash.com is one of the most well-known sources of totally free photos no strings attached huge size good quality well if you're looking for the woman in red smiling chances are you're gonna get this result and you may choose to use it it really stands out. It's a nice photo, right? Well, most designers also thought the same way. So I've seen this girl countless times in countless websites. From tech to medical to AI to whatever. It's overused. It just doesn't feel special anymore. And when you're the freelancing, clients usually want something tailored made for them. Custom, especially for them. So if you go for the lowest hanging fruit, for the Eiffel Tower, with broad stereotypes, 
well, you may get an angry client. You may want something special for them. So that's why you can use no. Now to recap, you can exclude words if you use double hyphen no, N-O. You can add multiple ones as well. No Eiffel Tower, no river, no baguettes or whatever. Though I found that using multiple no's sometimes gives me strange results. So use it wisely. There's also something to be said about your expectations. If you use a prompt that says mountains in the winter, you would naturally assume that there's going to be some snow, right? Winter and snow go hand in hand. Well, if you simply use no snow, unfortunately, because those concepts are so well tied together, you're still going to get some. Remember, no is the same thing as minus 0.5. You want a realistic portrait, but then you say no eyes or no mouth. And while mid-journey can create all sorts of monsters um, and things that basically don't exist, you will be confusing the platform. If the main concept is clashing with the no command, it doesn't make sense. You want a close-up of a person, but then no face. It doesn't make sense or no mouth or no nose. Now, in general, what I like to do is I prefer to use weights by using digits. For example, mountains 5 in the winter, snow minus 4, and that will totally remove the snow. But um, will you be able to tell that it's winter? Well, I don't think so. So let's do mountain 5 in the winter 4, snow minus 4. If you want to work smarter, you could say autumn instead of winter. That should give you a closer result to what you're looking for. It's all about your vocabulary and how used to mid-journey you actually are. Now let's check out the result. And yes, this is clearly winter and there's little to no snow depending on how you interpret these images. Notice the results are quite different, but overall, if you want to exclude words, I think it's best to use digits rather than using the no command. Oh, but one very important use is this no text and that's because midjourney has a very hard time rendering text correctly in short it's gibberish so adding no text is actually a great idea especially if it's generating stuff like i don't know a map or a library or something like that that will typically have words so no text is actually great for the rest of them probably using digits may be a better choice okay let's keep going welcome back you got to the end of the course but we're not finished first of all i'm gonna do my best to keep all the lectures updated i'm gonna add more features as they roll out but uh, what i want from you is to keep using mid journey in learning mode not to finish deadlines not to get very super specific images that you have in your mind no please focus on getting used to it so you're very familiar with all the commands, with chaos, word weights, quality, and so on. So you can begin to predict what anime mode will give you versus the regular mode. Remember, it's not about making money right now. It's about being at the front of the line. When companies are going to start hiring for mid-journey, having it on your resume will count a lot, being in so early on. So my advice is you think medium to long term. That's what's going to help you get ahead. Another friendly advice. Please learn Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop. And not because I have a course on that, but it's because Midjourney and Photoshop work so well together. You can take your results from Midjourney to the next level. That's why I think you should invest your time and energy into future-proof tools. Thank you for sticking with me until the end of the course. And please write a review. I would really appreciate it. Thanks again, this is Chris signing out.